I'm back. Oh, what have we got? A Bogner Goldfinger 45. Yeah. <laughs> what can you say about that? Well, what you can say about it is a bit of a premium amp. But uh, it's not an ordinary sort of amp. It's not like a, I don't know, a Satriani Marshall or anything like that. It's a bit of a laid back deal. Well, what do I mean by a uh, laid back deal? Well, basically, it's got a very nice clean channel. You can give it a bit of drive down here. It's got another couple of things that we'll talk about. And it's got a second channel that can be either like a 60s amp, whatever that means, or like an 80s amp, whatever that means. Now, of course, that will mean different things to different people, won't it? 60s amp or 80 amp. I remember some of them 60s things. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. <laughs> but some guys like them, right? So you might say, well, oh, 60s amp, you know, no real drive. You've got to put little pedals in the front. Well, it's true. You might have to do that. But equally, uh, as well as saying that's true, uh, well, there's an 80s switch. And you know what Eddie was like in the 80s, right? An ACDC and all that. Yeah. So... Maybe there's more to it than uh, than Bogner's letting on. Well, let's not kid ourselves. Mr. Bogner, I think his name Reinhold. Call him what you like. Could be Rhino Sorceress. Rhino, uh, forget it. It could be anything, but he's named Reinhold. And I've seen him. I've seen the videos of him. He's a bit of a quirky guy. To say the very least. I mean, I've seen him dressed in all these look like coloured feathers. I don't know. Maybe he's a bit of a turkey. But maybe he isn't. Whatever he is, he can make amps. Yeah, he can make amps because when we get to see inside this one, a bit like the Bogner Brixton, say that fast, it's made very well, highly likely. I mean, I haven't been inside yet, but his reputation is a bit ahead of him, if you get me. You know, not like some of these apps. You open an orange and what do you get? Well, you get apples and pears from China. <laughs> With this one, California, rock and roll. And of course, as well as the amp, you get a very nice Goldfinger 45 pedal. Now, this works quite well, actually. You, it's, you, it's got two channels called Alpha or Omega. Uh, don't ask me why. It's part of that Reinhold thing. You know how he is? He's a bit of a, well, he's out the ordinary. Even more than me. Yeah, so you've got this Alpha channel and you've got this Omega channel and you've got this Alpha Plus which puts a bit more drive in it and you've got this Omega Plus which puts a bit more drive in that one. So it's like having four channels but not quite, yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do, as we always do, first thing we're going to do with this amp isn't to look at the knobs and look at the pedals. We're going to whip it out of its cage and we're going to have a real close look up at what's going on inside because if you're paying the sort of money that this thing is, if it's still available, I think it is actually, but it might be, yeah, it's, it's borderline at the minute. They bought a new small one out that's just as dear. Anyway, if it's still available, uh, you'll see why. Uh, I think in England it's about 2,000, three or four hundred pounds new. Uh, whatever it is, it's too much, right? So, I'm going to whip the amp out right now, and then uh, we'll go and have a look inside. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Well, there we go. That didn't take long, did it? Quick flip out, and there it is on the bench. Yeah, I like the uh, nice uh, hammerite finish. They call it that, I think, hammerite, or something like that. And it's, needless to say, it's gold, because it's a gold finger. <laughs> That's just classic. Got a few spare wires, don't worry about that. So, first of all, let's zoom in on the top, see what we've got at the top, have a little chat about that, and then we'll go look at the real uh, quality of the unit from the electronics point of view inside, because that's what you're buying, isn't it? You do want something reliable, don't you? Yeah, let's get up close and see what we've got. Some good things and some bad things, I guess. But we shall see. Well, here we go. 
What I like about this amp is uh, it shows you very simply what, uh, what it comprises of on the top. We've got a V1 12AX7, V2 12AX7, V3 12AX7, a V4 is a 1287 and that probably, although I can't be sure, I've got no circuit diagram, it probably drives the uh, reverb. And we've got a V5 12AX7, so nothing special there. They've put these little rubber rings on the tube uh, to stop it resonating really and squealing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, moving along them, it's exactly like I said. You've got your V2, V3, V4 and V5 when it gets in focus. Ooh, there you go. Now I do want to just mention the brands of these tubes. I don't understand why, but here you go. Maybe they've been changed by someone. Uh, Tungsol, here. JJ, nondescript China. JJ, nondescript China. Fancy that. And an amp that costs this much money. You can see on these power tubes, which are 6V6s by the way, you can see that they've got a, a number that's been put on the top of each one. And that's for matching purposes, so it looks to me like they've been matched pretty well. And I guess in an amp like this, if those are the original tubes, which I suspect they are, because this amp was made in July 2015, uh, somebody's put a bit of effort into that. I like to see that myself. Don't you? That's the Bogner power transformer, and as you can see, hopefully, it's a bit of a beast. Now, it only supports, from what I can see, uh, 240 volts, I think, but we'll have a look when we get underneath. Usual capacitors, it's got what looks like a choke, and there's the output transformer. Yeah. which says GF OT30. Let's hope it's not an output transformer of 30. <laughs> Capable of 30 watts because it's a 45 watt amp. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it means something else. Who knows? And we've got another capacitor down here. Oh, look. Somebody missed something. <laughs> I suspect they use the same chassis for other things. So it's all good. Okay, well, it's time to... No, it's not quite time to flip it over. We've got one more thing to look at uh, before we go anywhere, and that is that. Uh, you can uh, bias the tubes, a bit like a, a Marshall type of uh, solution I've seen before, where you've got three pins. This one, this one, and the centre ground. And off you go, put your meter in. Adjust with these to the necessary uh, bias, which, funnily enough, I'm not sure what it is for these particular ones. But uh, I could find out. So let's take a quick look at the uh, inside of the Goldfinger 45. On the whole of this front section here, you have a board that looks after all the various controls at the front, down the front, all down there. So, well, look at the quality of the components. We've got Sozo capacitors in here. Uh, oh, look, orange drop. Loads and loads of quality components, they're not the bottom end sort of things, you can just see that. And the actual manufacture quality of this board uh, is exceptionally high, in fact. It isn't it'll do, if you know what I mean. It's actually really, really high quality. There's a bit of a close-up. You can see that uh, here it was made in week 31, 2014, which is probably about June 2014. By the time it's gone all through the system, it's gone out. It was July 15, it was actually put out into the market, uh, according to the serial number, which we'll come back to. As you move along, you can see there are some chips in there, but they all look to me a bit like buffers and that sort of thing, you know. Moving further along, we've got the orange drop stuff, and then the Sozo. It's all pretty high quality, really, if you think about it. And look at the overall quality of wiring. Let me zoom back out a little bit. It's exceptional. Some amps uh, 
I've seen are substantially worse than that. Well, let's go look at the other board. Now what we've got over here, uh, it's really the preamp section. Uh, starting here, these are the preamp tubes. This is V1, V2, V3, and so on. So this whole section relates to preamp. All nice and simple. All joined from the controls at the front. As you can see, with these wires, a couple of cap capacitors stuck on the chassis. Of which it's a nice strong chassis as well, by the way. So, looking a bit further along, let's move the camera and see what we've got. We're really more into the power tube section. One, two, three, four. You can see them there. And you can also see the quality, again, of the components and the rest of it. It's all really very, very high quality. The board itself, I don't see anything about... Uh, oh, maybe it's on the other side. Let's go take a look. Okay, around this side. Uh, yeah, it just says, part number Goldfinger, 1027, valve PCB. That's all you get. Got rectification here. HT there. You can't really see what that one says. And off along it goes. But you can see yourself, the quality is absolutely first rate. Now looking at the power transformer in this section here, got a few spare wires that are sort of closed off down there. So there might be some way of turning this into uh, a different voltage uh, amplifier. But from my experience with uh, Bogner, they don't seem to want to let you. You know, they put a transformer in there that you can't just willy-nilly flip over to a different voltage. Which is a pain, uh, because anybody that was seriously travelling uh, would need other equipment rather than just flipping a switch and hey there's another voltage for you. It's protection, protectionism uh, generally in my opinion uh, to keep American amps in America and English amps and European amps in Europe. While we're talking of voltages there's a voltage protector for the input voltage. Now looking at the chassis you can see it's a sort of open-ended chassis with a bit bent up here and that just goes around, it's sort of, well how's the thing to, well it doesn't really allow you to flex, it could allow you to flex if it was a bit thinner, but this is pretty, pretty thick stuff, it looks like an eighth of an inch, feels like aluminium actually, yes it is aluminium by the look of it, eighth of an inch aluminium, uh, pretty nice really, you do a lot with it. By the way, just looking down under there, there is another little board for the controls, across the front of the amp at the top. I can't really uh, show you much about that. Well, overall, anyway, it's all a plus on this one. And just looking at the uh, quality, you can see that it's all pretty, pretty good stuff. Soldering's pretty cool. Everything seems to be good. So let's flip it back over and see where we go from there. So now we're around the back and uh, I just want to run along the back to show you exactly what we've got along there. Well, first of all, uh, the amplifier is Roche compliant and lead free. That's called a Wii uh, marking. That's a Roche marking. We'll get to the CE. It's at the other end. That way. <laughs> now, we've got this pre-FX. I'm going to come back to that a bit later. Uh, you can see there's a pre-boost gain and there's a pre-FX loop. And we're going to come back to that, like I said, because that's rather unusual. And it's second attempt by Bogner to get this right. Uh, he actually designed this idea into a previous amp that wasn't quite so great. We've got an obvious foot switch. You've seen the foot switch. And uh, that's where you plug it. By the way, it actually screws into here so you can't inadvertently pull it out. I also like uh, Mr. Bogner's f <laughs> fingerprint. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There he is. Well, assuming it is, you know, the screen printing. <laughs> you 
it's not really his, well, it is his fingerprint, but not as we know it. Okay, well, we're in the post effects, FX loop. Uh, interesting, we've got an on and an off, my button. We've got a series or parallel, and we've got a plus four, four or a minus 20. Minus 20 seems a bit low to me, but there you go. It's usually plus four or minus 10 from where I come from. But we do also have a loop gain, so we can mess around with this and get the loop where we need it by, you know, a particular volume with this knob here. All nice and simple. And that's the gold finger 45. My finger isn't gold. Though. We also have uh, a nice section with the speakers. We've got 8 ohm, 4 ohm. Or 16 ohm, which is quite nice. I like the 16s because I've got some products that fit in 16, you know, for what I'm trying to do. Can't say much more about that, except that it does say handcrafted in Los Angeles, California, USA. And having looked inside, I can believe every word. We have a HT fuse that's half an amp. And we have a switch that can switch it from full power to half power. I'm currently running on half power because when I run on full power, 45 watts doesn't sound loud until you get there. And then it is. <laughs> now let's move to the end. Uh, what we've got over here is the mains input. Well, more importantly is this here, 0715. And I think that means July 15. Well, I'm pretty sure it does, actually. I have my reasons for figuring that out. The 740, I don't believe for a second he's made 740 gold finger amps. Uh, no, I, don't, I just don't think so. It's not that common an amp. Uh, but it might refer to 740 overall. You know, the previous one was uh, something else, and the one before that was something else. Who knows? He isn't going to tell us. Mains fuse on this one says 2 amps. It's 100 watt. Uh, head, so the input power is 400 watts and it's 240 volts AC jobby with CE approval marking which is above uh, 5 mil, which it has to be by the one. So everything along the back, no surprises, all nice and simple. In fact the amp's designed to be, I guess, simple. So let's go around the front and take a look at the controls at the front because these are quite important and they're different on this amp than many of the amps you might have used. There's an overall view across the front, and we're going to zoom in and go that way. Now, one thing you do want to notice when you look at these settings here, these are the settings that I actually used uh, for the video uh, because I did the uh, plane first in this case, actually. Well, let's go along it. We start off with we've got an on and off, and we've got a standby in the middle, and then we've got a low at the bottom and high at the top. We have a post FX. We have a presence, we have a reverb, we've got a pre-effects boost on or off, and a channel select, well, channel select pretty obvious really. <laughs> the post effects is pretty much like uh, most post effects, you know, it's stuck in the middle of the amp somewhere, and uh, you know what an effect's like, an effects loops are pretty obvious really. We've got a reverb, which is where I had mine set, and a presence, I had it a little bit bright. I left the pre-boost off because I was using the pedal, which I could switch uh, things in and out anyway, without coming here. Let's move along a bit. We're still uh, actually on channel 1, which is all these here. And uh, what you've got is you've got treble, mid and bass, which is obvious. We have a gain that I pushed around a bit because when I was on channel one I wanted to drive it a bit more on one of the demonstrations. And I had the loudness pretty backed off on this, this alpha channel, as they call it. Uh, it says here post bright, that's where it was. That will just make it all a bit brighter. <laughs> it's pretty obvious really. It's a very basic amp really, in many ways. Uh, but there is the odd bit that uh, makes it better than some of the others. Now looking at the last part of the amp, we've still got a treble mid and bass, just like the rest. Now we've got a loudness, we've got a gain EQ, I'll come back to in a second, and we've got a gain. We've also got this 69 or 80 switch here, and what they seem to 
try and get across is that this amp can simulate a 69 amp, you know what they were like on the drive, not very much, or an 80s amp where they were on a bit more drive but still not very much, well maybe a bit more, but it, one of the good news things about this amp is you can drive it uh, with pedals and uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But this middle thing here, this gain EQ, is an EQ literally for the gain. It, it's not the same as these here and as you twizzle this round you'll find that it'll be toppy round here and it'll be more muffled round there. A bit like those old amps sometimes were. So I think it's harking back to them sort of, you know, them ideas of, hey, an older amp type of thing. Now I did want to just talk about that pre, uh, it's a pre-FX, not a post-FX. Post-FX is the FX, you know, loop that you know. The pre-FX loop is the one you don't know or don't really know. And the way you get to it is if you're in Alpha Channel or Channel 1, you hit this, and this switches in that pre loop. And if you're in uh, Omega channel and you want it in, hit that. And you can just walk between the two. It's all pretty boring, really. But the the preamp, uh, or the pre, well, I shouldn't say preamp, the pre loop will actually sit uh, a pedal, if you want a pedal, or a, a, whatever you want, really, into this loop that's before the amp, before the preamp, but after the guitar. It's almost like having one in the wire on the floor, except the one in the wire on the floor can affect the tone. Which so many guys will tell you that. Uh, what Mr. Bogner did, or Reinhold did, is he was very clever and he made this pre loop uh, actually to not affect the sound. So you can switch in or out just at a button, the pre loop and whatever effects are on it. I don't know, you could have a multitude of them on. But it just switches them completely in or completely out uh, so you don't affect anything to do with the tone. Because this amp is all about tone. No, not this tone. That tone. <laughs> the gold finger tone. Let's go back up. Well, there you go. See? I always knew I'd have a really good use for that Kemper DI box. <laughs> no, actually, it's in another review. I just, it was just at hand. I just thought I'd, you know, zoom in with the Kemper DI box. But it, it makes a great stand, but not at 75 quid. $100. <laughs> so there you go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it and put it back in its case because I don't like it hanging around out here. Not the place to be. It's got a really nice, by the way, spring reverb in the uh, in the cab, and uh, that's where all the wires were that were dangling around down there. So I'm just going to fit it all back, and uh, I'll see you in a second. Well, there you go. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back inside. Yeah, should be inside. <laughs> Somebody like me. <laughs> anyway, point is, uh, when you look at a, an amp like this. Clearly, it has these connotations of being an old amp. Nice, clean channel, very fendery. Well, it will be fendery with six V6s in there. It has a, a sort of a very light drive. Starts moving on to a bit more fendery. You know they're flat out sort of drive, which isn't that great to me. It is to some guys. And then you come on to this second channel, this Omega channel as opposed to the Alpha channel, where you've got the 60s mode. And I have to say, when it's in its 60s mode, it's pretty cool, actually. It reminds me a lot of a, a Plexi, a Marshall Plexi, an awful lot, really. Uh, and I'm not saying it sounds the same. What I'm saying is it just has that vibe, if you know what I mean. I've got some crap on, the, on my new, new one. <laughs> yeah, but, but coming back to the amp. So you've got the 60s vibe going on, and you can control, you know, with this, this gain EQ, you can control an awful lot, actually, uh, with tone. But you flip it up into the 80s, uh, and that's another story again, you know, it takes you literally into the 80s of an amp, 
that doesn't have effects pedals in front of it and all that sort of stuff. It's just a regular 80s type of amp. You'll know which ones I mean. You figure them out. And uh, yeah, very clever idea. Because everybody doesn't want, uh, you know, the most highly driven uh, tube monster amp in the world. Everybody doesn't want that. Some people, believe it or not, don't play metal. <laughs> well, I like metal. But I like the older stuff too. It's probably my age. <laughs> but the thing is, there's a lot more people that like the older sounds of music uh, than the newer stuff. A lot more people, no matter what you might think as a guitarist. Uh, you know, ask anybody about the Led Zeppelins of this world, the Jimi Hendrixes of this world, or the Freeze, you know, uh, he's an awesome musician, or Rory Gallagher, or Gary Moore, or you name it, they're all. They're they're all inside this amp, uh, one way or another. And that's not even without them using one, which is a bit weird, but uh, that's what the Goldfinger's about. Now I do want to talk a little bit about that pre-loop. You know, that thing that I talked about earlier a little bit. Think of your guitar lead coming along, and it goes in there, and it comes out the back, although, well it does come out the back actually, and it goes to this pedal, and then it goes back in again. But it's not actually a loop, or the loop. Let me rephrase that. Yeah, well, why would you want one of them? Well, you know the olden days, <laughs> where they used to have loads of pedals in front of the amp. Well, a lot of people still do, fancy that. Well, your guitar couldn't get to the amp without going through those pedals. Bit of a problem could be because on all the pedals I've used when they're all piled up like that they're really they're noisy or they're this or they're that or they affect the tone there's no doubt to that and um, the guys that buy this sort of amp or would buy this sort of amp I think a tone hound type of guys so they want that tone the one that they can hear right up here and you can't get it out of a modern metal amp in fact it's probably why Bogner built this thing in the first place why am I jumping around at it Okay, well that's the mentality of it. But that loop is either there or not there, depending where you press the button. When you go to that alpha plus or that uh, omega plus, you saw it on the pedal, uh, that switches in that loop. And when you click it back off, it switches it out. Very nice. But what did I use it for? Hey Tony, what did you use it for? Well. Actually, I had a TS-808 stuck in that little loop. It was awesome. And I could bring the TS-808 in on the Alpha channel, or on the Omega channel. I could bring it in in the 60s, or in the 80s. And I could bring it in in the driven, or the less driven. Yeah, huge number of options. And the TS-808, to me, remember it's only me, sounded exactly right with this amp. In fact, it sounded really, really good in real life. What the video comes out like, I don't know, because you know how sometimes you don't always get the right sound, or you do, or you're this, or you're that. But in reality, it sounded good. So I think the idea of this uh, pre-loop uh, is a very good idea. And like I said before, Bogner tried that on an earlier amp. I don't know which one it is, but I read about it somewhere. And it wasn't that successful. But this one actually is. So that's a quite, to me, a pretty major feature. Another feature I like about this amp, uh, honestly, when you get the reverb cracked a bit in that clean channel, it just sounds really, really good, especially with a good guitar. If you use a less good guitar, and I tried two different guitars on this, I used a Harley Benton, which cost me 120 quid, and I used my Ibanez, that didn't cost much more, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> different pickups and things like that. So the Ibanez was the sort of sound that I, I want and the Harley Benton was a sort of trial to see how good the Harley Benton was in the, an amp as good as this compared to uh, a guitar that I know is good. And I hate to say it, but there was no comparison. None. Uh, so the setting stayed the same. Everything was the same. They were both humbucker guitars. Harley Benton wasn't good. 
So that's coming up in a different video. But this review uh, with the Bogner, I just wanted to run you past this one because it's not that common an amp. It really isn't. Now I don't think there's that much more to talk about except for that other one little thing. Uh, I could go off and on about CE approvals and Rosh compliance and all the rest, but this amp has them all. Unlike some of the products I've reviewed in the past that claimed they were this and claimed they were that and they were completely illegal. Fancy that. But well, this amp is legal. Uh, it's all there. Everything's exactly the way I'd expect it. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was the power supply, you know, the input power, the power transformer. It looks to me on this amp that the power transformer, whatever country you buy it in, that's the power transformer you've got and it's the one you're keeping because there's no real place to change it around into all the voltages and I think that's by design of this guy Mr. Bogner yeah okay there's a bit of music coming up next that way <laughs> I got it right uh, it's coming up next and make your mind up I just did a few a few chords and things like that and played a track and that was it so it's only an example remember of the sounds you can have and uh, it's all interesting so, finally, where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with an app that can handle 60 sounds, 70 sounds, 80 sounds, and believe it or not, if you put the right pedal in front of it, it can handle hmm, 2015 sounds and everything in between. People think that these sort of amps couldn't do that sort of stuff, but they can. You just have to spend a bit of time getting the sound right, uh, probably with external products. So how would I rate it? Well, I'd rate this at about 8, and I wouldn't go any higher, because I don't think uh, the price is that great. Now, you might get one second hand or something, but they were literally well over £2,000. They might be cheaper in America, you know, sort of $3,000 less or something. I don't really know the exact prices, but they're not cheap. That's one thing you can be sure, they're not cheap. You're not going to get anything below a couple of grand in pounds. I don't think, for a new one. Yes, that 8 out of 10 is a very good uh, analysis of where this thing stands, really. It's high up the chain, but it's too high up the chain for my pricing, for what I want to pay. I wouldn't pay that sort of money at the list price. In fact, uh, I tell him to bog off. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to mention the guy where I, I bought this thing from second hand, because it's not really second hand. It's new, and... Uh, yeah, www.rolliesguitars.co.uk It'll be just about there somewhere. And you can go up and have a word with Roland. He's in England, I'm afraid, but he does sell stuff everywhere around the world. It's a pretty good price for this one. And, uh, yeah, not much more I can say about him. Good guy, one of the better ones. You know, there's some out there that are not so great, but Roland is pretty cool. He's got a Facebook thing as well, facebook.com slash Rolly's Guitars, R-O-L-L-Y-S, Rolly's Guitars, so you can go there too, what about that? So that uh, just about sums up this amp and uh, yeah the music's coming up next and uh, I've got some more reviews to do so I'm going to go and do them now, check out the uh, thing, how it sounds, it might be good to you, bad to you, indifferent to you, ignore the plane, I don't know he's good, sometimes I'm bad, sometimes it depends what mood I'm in, it's like everything isn't it? Anyway, until next time, rock and roll. See you again. Hope you like the job. Very nice.
Thank you.